Yeah. Bro, we decided to play a custom on the map that I'm the worst yeah, at, and I do <laughs> shit. Wow, that's awesome. Great. Yeah. Who never even know, five and oh, five and oh, five so much. I've actually never enjoyed uh, something so much in my life. That was so much fun. Put dude. us back on fucking Oregon with the same team, Jake, and I'll bang you over a table unconsensually <laughs> and proceed to skull fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again. Operation Deep Freeze has been out for a while and oh boy, I've got some things to say about it. Before we get into all that, let's start at the beginning. Time waits for no one. Operation Cavernous Chill brought a ton of new changes and a new operator to abuse for the next couple of months. Tubero. However, that's not the most interesting thing about this operation. The most interesting things about this update are the new changes that came to the game itself and oh man, they certainly are some changes. To start things off, however, let's talk about the new guy, Tuburo, aka Tubby. Tubby? Hey! Nobody calls me Tubby! He's the latest two speed, two armor defender who wields the Zoto canister, which is a combination of Smoke's gas canister, an impact nade, and a micro blizzard that would make the Dairy Queen proud. It activates as soon as it hits a surface, has a radius that covers around two reinforced walls, and any attacker that walks into it is slowed and leaves behind footprints that can be seen from below. And it freezes gadgets, deactivating them or pausing them temporarily, depending on which gadget it is, making it yet another counter to the breaching shenanigans of Thermite and Ace. Open the door or I'm gonna throw rocks through your windows, you dumb whore. Now you might be thinking, does that mean he's better than Bandit and Cade? No! In fact, quite the opposite, because just like Thatcher and Thermite, they're better together. Because once that freeze goes away, the devices on the other side are gonna reactivate, and since you only have three canisters, you're gonna need the electric company to come in and ensure that the attackers stay out. Despite that, he isn't the reason why people are upset with the game right now, because people are more angry over the changes that came with the update, specifically the ones made to the frag grenades. For those of you who don't know, the frag grenades used to work like how they did in most other first person shooters. When you pulled it out, your character would pull the pin and it would start a timer that flashed on your crosshair that would get faster until the grenade would explode. This would let players cook the grenade before they threw it, and it was a powerful technique that you had to know if you wanted to play higher elo matches. However, because of this power, the devs only let certain operators have it, usually three armors and operators with arguably better secondary gadgets, to try to limit its use during gameplay. Despite this, people would still play characters that had frags because of how useful they were, so the devs made the decision to remove the ability to cook frag grenades in this update. While they can't be cooked anymore, multiple operators who couldn't have grenades before were given these new frags, such as Lion and Osa, due to the fact that the reason why they couldn't have them before was now gone. Not only that, but they removed the old and beloved Terrorist Hunt game mode and replaced it with map training and the versus AI game mode, where you fight 5 AI that play like real players. Combine that with the new map Lair, alongside a cheating epidemic comparable to the one in Operation Parabellum, and you've got a community whose general thoughts on this update are... Yes sir, thought about killing myself! And honestly, I can't blame people for being upset with these changes because... I'm a little bit upset too. First of all, I get where the devs were coming from with trying to change the frag grenades. I did it. Get away quick beyond this. It ain't making me laugh, but I did it. I mean, before this update, they had to be very careful about which operator got them because if the wrong person got frags, they could become the strongest operator of the season, like with what happened with Iana. On the other hand, this was not the solution to the problem. Cooking frag grenades was an important skill to learn when it came to high ranked siege and it was a very useful tool for attackers. With the ability to cook frags, you or your teammates cameras could point out an enemy defender that's hiding in a corner completely still and throw the grenade up from below or from a spot where they couldn't swing you. Now you not only can't explode them from below, but if you throw the grenade where someone's hiding, 9 times out of 10 they will usually swing you before you can get back to your gun, making it pointless to even use it in the first place. Now, because of this change, almost nobody uses frag grenades because they're essentially useless and not only that, but their reasoning for why they removed it was questionable. The devs reasoning for why they changed it is because they wanted to make it harder for it to kill people without giving them a chance to react, and make it harder for the grenades to destroy utility. What they failed to realize, however, is that there are two operators in the game whose gadgets are based around countering throwables. Jaeger's gadget is more stationary, but they have a big radius and can destroy three projectiles per ADS, and since he spawns with three ADS systems, he can get up to nine projectiles in a match. 
And Wamais is a magnet that can be thrown anywhere, has a massive radius, and he gets six of them over time. Plus, both of them have good loadouts, so you aren't handicapping yourself by playing these operators. If people were really struggling against frags and they weren't switching to the operators who are designed to counter projectiles and grenades, then that's not a gameplay issue, it's a skill issue. I guess that means you need to shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Now when it comes to the new AI playlist and map training, my feelings are a bit more mixed. On the one hand, the versus AI game mode is really cool and a lot of fun. On the other, however, it was not worth replacing the T-Hunt game mode. The reason why people liked T-Hunt so much is because it was fast. You could boot it up on any map and run through it at a quick pace to get your warm-up in without having to play a full match of casual. The new AI game mode can be as long as full matches, and at the time of me making this, you can only play 5 operators on each team, and there's only one playable map. That's a massive downgrade, and I understand it's in beta, but compare that to T-Hunt, which had every map in the game, and you can see why many people are pissed off. And then there's Lair an absolutely beautiful map with an absolutely horrible layout. What the hell is this? Siege already has a problem with a lot of the maps being more defender sided, but Lair is on a whole nother level. Tight corners, long corridors, a confusing layout, and hard to counter spawn peaks and runouts make this map a headache for attackers and in my opinion a boring and unfun experience for defenders and it doesn't help that you can't ban it until the season's over. It's a shame the map is the way it is because I think it's the most beautiful map in the entire game. It's beautiful! It nails the atmosphere of a secret base in the middle of a cave, and playing on it makes me feel like I'm James Bond. Until my teammate gets spawn peaks from a window that he can't see until it's far too late. And as for the cheating problem, to give you an idea of what that's like, I've been in matches with blatant cheaters, but because they do it subtly, we will still win the match, and then they will get away scot-free without any sort of ban or repercussions, even if we report them. It's gotten so bad that the official social media accounts for the game had to make videos acknowledging that they were doing something about it because of how it seemed like nothing was being done on Ubisoft's end. So yeah, people are not happy, but I don't think it's as bleak as it seems. The game is still a lot of fun right now, and if history has taught us anything with this game, it's that if you complain hard enough, you can make things happen. With that in mind, you should not harass the devs, but let them know that changes like these should be done with more of the community in mind, so that updates like this one don't happen again. At least, not without the support of the community behind it. Thank you for watching, be sure to subscribe, and tune in next time for when I use the Spice from Dune to advance my Rainbow Six Siege career.